I'm going to show you a card. You may have caught it on my Facebook Live um, if you watched it last week, but I'm going to switch it up a little bit. So even if you saw it, you're going to want to watch again today because I'm going to change it. And then you're going to want to watch my video that comes up in a day or two because I'm going to switch it up one more time. And the next switch up is going to be a little bit more of a switch up. But I'm going to show you, I'm going to stop using it soon because Valentine's Day is getting here and I'm going to have to force myself to move on. But I have fallen in love with this suite more than I expected, which is appropriate because the name of the suite is All My Love. And it's a big suite. It's in the Occasions 2019 catalog. And it actually has two stamp sets and two dies that the paper then matches. So today I'm going to use the stamps out of both sets, but I'm going to show you if you choose just to get this one. But I'm going to mix the stamps from this with the dies from the other set. So this is the Forever Lovely, and I'm going to use these little stamps here, which have ended up being, out of this whole entire catalog so far, my favorite stamps out of them. And then I'm going to use the dies, which I know you've seen. Again, here's the, the dies out of the other one. I'm going to use these dies over here. Um, and I'm going to use this Happy Valentine's Day, but the this set also has a Happy Valentine's Day. So if you chose to just get this stamp set, you could use a smaller Happy Valentine's Day. But the card that I'm going to do could be a wedding, a birthday, an engagement, a shower. I mean, you could use it. I thank you really a multitude of reasons. So here's the two stamp sets. This is the Forever Lovely. I'm going to use these and see you could use this little Happy Valentine's Day for the inside greeting. I'm going to use this bigger one just because I have it. One's photopolymer and one's cling. And here I'm going to just run through some of the other cards that I've made and I think all of these have a video. So this one uses the the dies that are and the stamps that are meant to go together and this one does have a video this is the paper this one does not have a video but this it is oh this paper is laser cut paper it's not the paper that goes with it this is the paper that goes with the suite and a real simple here's the other happy valentine's that i'm not using and this is the ribbon that goes with the suite kind of show you everything that you can see these are the stamps that go with the hearts that I'm using today. It's the main stamps and the dies that do go with that stamp set. So you can see I've kind of played with them all the way around. And then here are the hearts of the stamps that I'm using today. And this is a real fun video. This shows you how to use a lot of the big hearts that come. They're stitched, the hearts, and I'm not even, oh, I guess I am using one of the stitched hearts today. But I'm going to use one of the stamps out of, or dies out of the stamp set that I've not used yet. Then this was my latest video, and this is super fun. This has gotten a huge amount of interest on Pinterest and on our demonstrator sharing site. So this is a real fun, and again, it says Happy Valentine's Day. Take this saying off, which I did over here. This one hasn't been posted yet. I haven't put it up anywhere where I can post it. I just switched it to Happy Wedding Day, and I don't know if you can see this. This is a whole bunch of these hearts, and I've stacked them up. I don't know if you can see it. And also on this one, because it was a wedding card, I took the Wink of Stella. There, maybe you can see it there. And I've just shimmered up the hearts. So they're a little bit fancier than the Valentine's Day card was. And I don't know. This, in, in real life, this is pretty stacked high. It's probably got about eight or ten of those hearts that I stacked on top of each other just to give them a little bit of dimension because it was a wedding card. And as I've been going, like every time you run dies through with this set, it seems that you get extra dies. So I tried playing around with putting the bride and groom on there from another set, but I am accumulating lots of envelope fillers and I still would like to do something with these. These would be pretty like to wrap around a candle or something. Um, but every time I run cards through, I end up with these over here that I can play with. I just haven't had any time to play. And Valentine's Day is going to be here before you know it. I have decorated my house. I hoped to get some Valentine decorations made. So here's the card that I did on my Facebook Live. Actually, this is the one that I did as the mock-up for it. So you can see it's could be a Valentine, it could also be a wedding, a shower, any of the heart occasions, you know, they can go a long way. So I did this one in the white 
and the coral. It's a Calypso coral. So then on Facebook Live, I switched it to vanilla and mint macaron. So it's the same card, I just switched colors. So today, I'm gonna show you how I did the card if you didn't see it on Facebook because it uses some of, the, see this stitch scallop die? It's my favorite die out of these stamps. But I'm gonna switch the colors again, just because we can. So here we go. So let me go back to the white. I started with the vanilla because I really like the vanilla. You know, these are my favorite ribbons, these stitched polka dot tools, and I really like the vanilla, and so many people don't know that we have vanilla. They just think that we have the white. But then I also wanted to switch over to this paper, and this paper is from our Tropical, mm, Tropical Escape, Tropical Escapade. I can't remember the name because I haven't used it since summer, but see on the back it's green. But I really liked the way, I hope it looks pretty. I haven't done it yet, but I'm gonna cut the big heart out of this. And then this is the Grapefruit Grove celebration paper that's free right now. It's running low, so if you love this paper, you need to hurry and get an order in. So this is a half a sheet folded card side, and this is a quarter sheet cut a quarter inch smaller all the way around. So I'm going to take Blushing Bride, which I don't think it may be Blushing Bride. I didn't check. Uh, let's see. You know, sometimes you just do it by eyeball. I can pick it up. Maybe it is blushing braid. Perhaps it is. But sometimes, you know, I just pick up things in my, where I have my ink stored next to my paper, and I think eh, it looks like it's a good color. So I'm going to stamp my background first with this distinctive stamp, which those are my favorite new kinds of stamps. I'm so glad we came out with these because with the one stamp, you don't have to stamp multiple times to get multiple colors. Because one stamp and you get all of those variations of color just because of the way they've cut the design into the stamp. So I'm just gonna take this, and I'm just using my inside of my card for scrap because it's gonna get covered up. But because this is photopolymer, it's really easy to line up and I'm able to just kind of make a triangle background up here. So I'm just gonna kind of fill my card. You don't want them to all be in the same place because you don't want it to look like you used the same stamp over and over even though we are. So just gonna go down and then fill these in. And I have some brace on the edges. You can see right there, it looks kind of hmm, not the best stamping, but because I'm gonna use that die and take the edges off. So there we go. And see, if you had a wedding that you were going to, just find out the colors that the bride has chosen for her wedding. And then even if it's two colors, you could do it in two colors, but you could fill whole sheets of paper and make really pretty background paper. So now we just have to cut our pieces. Get that out of the way and get my big shot over here. Oh, I guess I'll go ahead and stamp the inside too. Get this back open. So to the inside, I'm just gonna take one of my hearts down here in the corner. And that one I do want to make sure I stamp better. And then this is the Happy Valentine's from the other stamp set, but you could use, see I have them both. You could use the smaller one if you wanted. I just if I was gonna use a smaller one, I would probably get a brown or a black and do it down here because otherwise that those tiny little words are gonna lose their um, impact with those hearts and I really like the hearts on the inside. So I'm just gonna pull that bigger Happy Valentine's. But you know, make, use what works. You might not even have a Happy Valentine's, so just get something that says, I love you if you're making Valentine's. Go with what you have, especially now that we're this close and if you don't have time to order something, that's okay. So let's get the big shot over here. First I'll run the two hearts through and this is just my standard cutting. Get my tea out of the way, my hands are freezing. Sometimes I have hot drinks just so I can warm my hands up. So it's just my standing, kind of ignore where I say embossing only sometimes for my classes. My camps, I write stuff on there so the plates stay newer longer, and then once they're not new, greatly new anymore, then I use them. So 
I've got the big heart on there. I'm going to put my little heart on here. And the designer series paper is going to cut obviously easier because it's far less intricate of a die and it's paper. The other one's cardstock and much more intricate. So I'm going to roll this through once like this and then I'm going to pull. This is how I do my double cuts. Just hold it all tight together. Well, I'm going to pick this one up because it's the static electricity in here. See, that cuts super easy. There's my green on the other side. And this does give you, see, now I have another thing for my little spare plate over here. And then I'm just going to take this one and I'm going to flip it upside down. Although it looks like it cut pretty good. But I can see right here, when you flip them upside down, you can always see then if there's some place that didn't cut. And that way you're not ruining things by trying to pull them out of the dies when they're not cut. So roll that through once more. And then once more. And then you can take your top plate off. And then you can see for sure if everything's cut. And now I can tell everything's cut. This piece came out right away. But sometimes these more intricate pieces take another time or two through. Smooth this over. And then I've got this piece. And this is the piece that comes in the set that I really love. But again, because it's so stinking dry, all of you that live in the Midwest, I'm sure if you have your heat turned on like we do, especially because it's been so cold and our auxiliary heat has kicked on a few times, it makes it so, like my hair is just fly away. I feel like when I'm back in grade school and you know you could get the static electricity going in your hair. So this has a stitched and a scallop. And normally, I can try it because it hasn't, yesterday it did get to 60, so we didn't have the heat on. Normally I can lay these on here. Nope, see, and it's, the static is just like lifting that up. So when that's your issue, what I'm going to do, this, the nice thing about this die is that it's longer than the paper. Because we've had some of these before in the past and they're just like almost the size of the paper. So I'm going to take my washi tape and I just have one of our thin ones. And you know, washi tape, while it's really pretty to put on cards, it's super useful and it's so cheap. So like I have some in my kitchen. And you're going to laugh about this. I have some in my kitchen. And like when it retires or if it's a pattern that, you know, I just don't care about. Because some of them, you know, they're just not your taste. So I use those to like seal bags of chips. Or, you know, when you have a bag of macaroni or a bag of rice. And it's like almost gone. Then I just have some washi tape. And I just wrap it. I twist around it. And then I just seal it with some washi tape. And then I have some of our black ones and one of our white chalk markers um and like when I have stuff and you don't know like if I have because I like we like different kinds of rice so like I'll write if I pour it in a jar I'll write jasmine or something on it but I use washi tape all over the house we like we have washi tape everywhere it's cheaper than mask scotch tape and it doesn't last forever. So if you hoard it and like in three years you saved your little ice cream pattern because you really, really loved it, when you go back to use it, it's not going to work. So don't, it's one of those things you can't hoard. So it just takes one pass with this because again, it's a stitched one. And if you go back and forth, you're going to make your stitched holes too big. But isn't that adorable? So see, it just cuts this little piece here off. And now with this washi on this, it will last all of the other times. So now you just flip it around. The washi that's already stuck on there. In fact, I already had, there was washi on here from the cards I've made before. Like it would probably last for you to do a good 10 cards, but I pulled it off just so you could see me at it again. Through this way. And you can see where it's just taking that. Maybe you can, it's my big shot in the camera. Just pulls that right off. And then just lift this up. And again, you know how we don't like a speed bump to go through the big shot. So I'm going to turn it this way so it goes long ways through again. It's better for your dies so they don't get broken. Because it's never good for your die if you have a straight one like this to go just kerplunk. So if you just think of it as a speed bump, 
that will remind you. And you know it makes that horrible noise. So you know sometimes when you've done it, it's not gonna ruin your big shot, but it could break your die. And if you have this die and you love this die and Stampin' Up! no longer carries this die and then you break it, it would be sad. So you do wanna take care of them. I can't really see because I'm not standing up. That time I did cut my tape. Not quite sure how that happened. I think it was folded on itself. I can't even really tell if that's straight, so I'm gonna just hope for the best. <laughs> Actually, that stood up. I'm trying to get this filmed because I need to call the insurance company, and you know. It's been one of those things where we've tried to call and we've been on hold for an exceedingly long time. So I'm trying to get this done so I can be on hold again for a while. So isn't that cute? Super, super cute. And the nice thing about this is whatever size of card you have, you can make a scalloped, stitched scallop panel. And it doesn't, I mean, it's just one pass. Don't go back and forth. Because invariably, I will see somebody somewhere and they'll post a card with this and somebody will say, I'm having such a hard time getting my stitches to stay or to come out. And it's because they're doing it too many times and it's getting stuck in there. So just do it once. Okay, so now we just need to get these out of here. I'm not going to put my take your pick tool in because I'm lazy. If you just need to poke a couple things out, you don't need to stick it in your thing. Unless you keep it in there. When mine's not in the case, I just keep it in there. So, see that's pretty. It just gives it a little bit of marbling with that designer series paper. You could use just cardstock, but I just thought that would be pretty. And here is my one that's going to make the mess. Although I think I can probably pull it out. And leave most of those stuck in there, yeah. And I'll just take those out after you're done watching. Let's see how pretty that foil paper is. It can be the foil paper. The Grapefruit Grow is a little overwhelming because it's so holographic if you're not doing like a bright and funky card. But when it's when it's more delicate like this, then the um the see, you lose some of the holographic to it and it's more subtle. So use it on something small like this. So then we just have to stick all of this together. So I'm gonna take my white polka dot tool. And what you wanna do is take a long, more than you need, because it's better to cut off a half an inch and lose it than not have enough. Especially if you're going for a bride card, you want lots of floofy ribbon. So pull this long. And this ribbon's cheap and it looks so pretty. And you can be like me and just every time you place a Stampin' Up! order, just order some more of it. Because it looks super, super pretty. And well, and look, that's exactly how much I have. So I was about to go a quarter inch less. Sometimes it's hard to get this tape off of here. I'm just gonna cut it off. I could probably get it off, but it's faster when I'm trying to talk to you to just get rid of it. Now it's stuck to my shirt. Okay, so just pull this. So see I've got it in half, which is gonna go out of camera range. And I'm gonna take, now I have to hopefully remember that I've ordered some more of that. And then I'm gonna just take this, which is my top panel. Tie this around just in a knot first, just to kind of get it on here. I wanted to save ribbon, which I did. I did that saving ribbon technique on my Facebook video. Then you can tie the knot first and just tuck the ends around. But because I have a little bit of extra ribbon on this because it was the end, I don't need to save it because there's plenty. I'm going to take this and pull my ribbons through. And then you just need a glue dot. You need two for this one. Where did I put them? 
I know they're here. I knew I just saw them. Go back to my little miniature take your pick. And the glue dots are just a tad big for the heart. I'm sticking to my sweater. So just put one up here. And just kind of place it where you want it to be. And then you need one on the bottom tip of the heart. And again, the glue dots, they can be a little bit fatter sometimes in your skinnier designs. Just fold them in half. Up. Stick that there. And then we do the same thing with this. Just pull my ribbons through. Both sides. You could use um, this big shot adhesive on these hearts. It just wastes a lot, like all the center bit that on the big one, of course you would be using your center on something else, but that's a lot of adhesive and the little glue dots work fine. So I would rather save my big shot adhesive for something, you know, on the words or something where it's really hard to get adhesive on it because there's enough space on these just by folding them over that it holds them. Okay, so now that I know that they are where they want, I'm gonna add some adhesive to the sides. I don't like to stick them all the way down because you can move two. The more you add, the harder it gets to move them. Just the tool can, can kind of not it doesn't get stuck on itself, but it's you want to keep it separated. And my adhesive. And I'm gonna take my scissors and some of these that are did you know I had it fold it over on itself. So a couple of them I will leave looped and a couple of them I will cut apart. It gives the illusion of a bigger bow. And this tool kind of, it holds its shape nicely. So if you're gonna put this on top of a package, you could even wrap some more around it, like pull one more bow over it. And if you're gonna put it in a envelope, then it lays flat. It's not like other ribbon where it gets real stiff. You see it smash as well. But then it perks right back up. So then I have, these are the gingham adhesive, sticker back adhesive sequins that come in the with the gingham paper. And this is just the iridescent ones. So I'm just gonna add a few of those that will give it a little bit more sparkle. And because they've got the adhesive on the back, you just pull them off either with the take your pick or just using my snips. Just add a couple of those. And then these are um, from the Floral Romance Suite and they come in different colors. You could almost get away with the pink ones, especially for Valentine's, because you know at Valentine's time, you can mix red, pink, purple, they don't even have to go, because if it's a shade of red, it always reminds me of grade school when you got Valentine's and even then I knew that colors were kind of supposed to match. Except for a Valentine's Day, it didn't matter if the more hideously awful the reds and pinks didn't match, the more Valentine-y it was. But I'm just going to take two of the white ones, especially if you were doing this for a wedding. You don't want it to be garish then. So 
I'm just gonna add two of those for a little bit more texture. But this was a Valentine because I put it on the inside. So you can kind of mess with those. This, this, this ribbon always looks super pretty if you do a gift bag or a present. Like uh, often when we take a gift to a wedding, I usually just make my card super pretty and then wrap it, the gift fairly simply in a one colored of wrapping paper and then put the gift on the mount this on top of the gift so there you go so we have three different versions and I am going to do the super duper version of it which will be a wedding card my next one will be a wedding card um so you'll want to catch that video um well it's going to be my Facebook live I guess this week so I probably won't get this posted today so you're going to have to come back and it'll be my Facebook lives are on Thursdays right now so I'm trying to keep to a schedule but you know sometimes life happens I tried to do them on I've tried different days so so far Thursdays are working so usually Thursdays around 1 or 2 Eastern Standard Time is when and they're on Sherry's cards so I hope you enjoyed that have a great day bye